بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our discussion of al-hawa the desires uh, from the perspective of Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala and the consequences of our hawa and he said in discussing how you're following your lowly desires how that can belittle you and how it makes you miss good deeds and then he said the proof can also be found when a person anticipates what his hawa is calling him to prior to attaining it he should then reflect on his state after his satisfaction has passed he should compare this between his satisfaction and his sin for that is when he will know that he has lost double of what he has gained really that is so profound and powerful these ulama the salaf of this ummah were so profound in their knowledge and their understanding and that the way they analyzed the Quran and the Sunnah and its applicability to the human condition was so profound and they had so much insight into these things about desires and sin. Let's reflect on what he said. He said, the proof can also be found when a person anticipates what his hoa is calling to him to. And then after that, when he said, after a person has done the sin, he should compare this between his satisfaction and his sin, for that is when he will know that he has lost double of what he has gained. Ayul Ahbab. A person of intellect, and this is why some of the Salaf, some of the early scholars, they used to write books about uh, the intellect as well. About uh, and and about them uh, hawa, you know, about the the disparagement and dispraise of hawa. And as a matter of fact, this is uh, from one of the books from Ibn Josie. But even earlier scholars prior to him, Rahimahullah Taala, used to write about these things and about the dunya and how these things uh, affect us and how they take us from the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and how the intellect, the the rational. And sound intellect is the one that is based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that it will make judgments. Because if we were to really govern ourselves, and human beings do not govern themselves primarily by intellect. And I think that's no mystery. That we do many things without thinking. And we do many actions which even if we do reflect on it a bit, we operate by our desires more than we do our intellect. And as... Ibn Josie was saying, which was very powerful, uh, that, and, and alluding to, as some of our Salaf did, that the intellect, the governing intellect, the, the intellect that's governing by Kitab wa Sunnah, that this intellect, the Aql, Sahih, will govern you to do righteous. Because if you're really thinking, you know before you drink, before you hit that, hit that weed, you hit that pipe, before you use the bong, before you inject, now those, those uh, depending on a person's, if they're addicted or not, these are other aspects that come into play. But before you do that, you know that that temporary satisfaction is going to go. That high, you're going to come down from the high. And then when you do, being a believer, you usually, you're going to feel sorrow. And you know that that temporary bit of satisfaction is no comparison to losing uh, the double, the sinfulness, and the fact you've now come down and it's, it's gone. When a person is committing illegal uh, sexual intercourse, masturbation, fornication, adultery, it's temporary. So the longest person may be a person who... who Allah has prowess that goes for 30 minutes or whatever or if they're doing other activity along with that and I'm talking about the haram and they're indulging in this haram that this haram lasts for a very little bit of time think about the person who indulges in the crime of, uh, of seeking out prostitutes so they, they go and do these sneaky uh, activities. They waste their money, lose their money. They commit a major sin. 
and they find little comfort in this and that action, that activity may last five to ten minutes. Maybe they're even caught doing this and arrested and it depends on the country that you're in what your consequences are going to be. So then they're humiliated in the dunya and in the hereafter. All for that five minutes of satisfaction. If it was even satisfying. So the beauty of the statement of Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he said he should compare this between his satisfaction, that five minutes, and his sin. For that is when he will know that he has lost double of what he gained. He gained a few minutes of satisfaction, a few seconds of satisfaction. But the sin was alim. The sin was, was double, maybe a hundred times that. Because think of how when they catch people for doing soliciting prostitutes, they put them on the paper, they put their names in the paper, they, if they're arrested and stuff like this, some of them they have to go through treatment programs and, and their name is out there. And if they're a married individual, they've lost their, their self in the sight of their spouse, their family, their neighbors, the general community, their name is out there. Their picture may be out there. The police know them. And more important than all of that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. So then they've committed a major sin. And then they've gotten a crime circulated in the dunya. And they've lost their status with the people. May Allah protect us from all of those crimes, I mean. So this is the consequence, as Ibn Jawzi said, of the hawa. And the temporary satisfaction versus the major sin and the feelings of that. And if you're the person who's a believer, they'll feel the sorrow. Especially if they're not a person who engages in those kind of activities often. When a woman who has always been chaste and she falls one time, she falls into something. That's so great to her. I mean, perhaps it might even cause her to, 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 to kill herself out of humility, out of humiliation. Because maybe in that society it's not known, that's not a common thing, committing fornication and adultery. She just got, feels horrible. And likewise, we should feel this way when we do sins. And this is the consequence of the hoa. Ibn Josie mentioned a, po a piece of poetry that a, a poet said. He said, a poet said regarding this, How much satisfaction that provoked happiness ended up revealing sadness and sorrows. How many desires ripped from their participants the garment of religion and virtue. So look at that. Chasing our desires. If we analyze the consequences before we do, this can help us to prevent that. Because we, we know, especially if we commit sins regularly, certain sins, then we, we're, we're aware of the limited satisfaction we're going to get. You know if you smoke weed that you're going to get high and you're going to go down. You're going to find whatever limited pleasure you find, You maybe you laugh, you giggle, you joke, but you know that you're going to go down. And if you have any iman, you know that for one, you can't approach your salat. And your salat will not, not be accepted as the Prophet wasallam said, I believe it's 30 days or 40 days. Come call the Nabi wasallam. And all the other consequences of that. So, Ayul Ahbab, may Allah bless us and, and bless you and forgive us and forgive you and help us and help you to harness our desires and be of those who monitor their desires and avoid disgrace and humiliation. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.